Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Futures Morning Leap Session for Tuesday, April the 26th, 2016. My name is Doug McKay. I'm the founder and head moderator of Quantum Leap Futures. Each day we come together uh, in this uh, live go-to, uh, first to do our pre-market uh, trade plan setup. We take a look at the market macro to micro structure of the market, uh, what our trade levels are, and ultimately drill down to our targets and our hypotheses for the day. This is a subscription room, so if you want to come in and check us out, uh, I'll put up my contact information in just a couple seconds. Before I do that, please read through the disclaimer. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of future results in any trades that you see in Quantum Leap are for education purposes only. Please trade your own trade plan, your own due diligence, and your own risk metrics. If you do want to come in and check us out, there's no website, there's no blog. This is not a commercial venture. This is a group of retail traders. Uh, getting together. We do everything live in this go-to, uh, including live trading analysis and trading during the course of the RTH session. Send me an email at quantumleapfutures at gmail.com or send me a Skype request at Doug underscore McKay. Uh, I'll be the one from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Uh, if you like this video, there's uh, uh, over 300, I know at least 300, up on YouTube. Uh, of these pre-market sessions. You can see what we do every day, same routine, and then gauge it against what the market did afterwards. Just do a search for Quantum Leap Futures on YouTube. And then if you like what I do, follow me on Twitter, at Crazy2. Okay, yesterday our main hypothesis was we were going to open up in range, in value, and we were looking for the market to open up and chop, come up, and then find responsive sellers between the 8150 key line in the sand and the, uh, the gap and the uh, VPOC and then roll over and then move down and come down towards this uh, 6975, maybe down to the top of the gap zone at 64 and then find buyers and then rotate up through and work its way back up. Uh, towards that 2100. I don't think we're uh, done with the 2100. We didn't really get a really big range uh, yesterday, and but they did stall out at the uh, at the end of the uh, RTH session, closing near the high tick. And you know, I posted in the room that we closed near the high of the day, and that we were likely to get continuation in the Globex, and that's exactly what we got. We went up and tested that uh, 91 and a quarter area. Okay, so let's look at the news first. We had uh, core durable good orders came in worse than expected. Um, and uh, basically we we're trading at that point in time around 87 and a quarter and they sold it down to 86 and that's about the reaction that we got. Nothing uh, really happened. We do have in the next uh, oh, six minutes or so, we do have Bank of Canada uh, Governor Pelos uh, speaking, um, so if you're going to trade, be careful. Uh, that could uh, precede uh, some clue in terms of what the Fed's going to do tomorrow. Uh, 9 o'clock, we've got uh, S&P CS Composite uh, HPI year over year, and then we've got Flash Services PMI uh, at 9.45, and then the big one will be uh, 10 o'clock, we got the... Uh, Consumer Confidence and the Richard Manufacturing Index. And then 1 o'clock, uh, you know, Great Britain, uh, Cunliffe is going to speak. Uh, but that's about it for the news. It is the start of the two-day Fed meeting. Tomorrow will be uh, a Fed announcement. I'm expecting us to chop around, not get much expansion uh, today as we come into the Fed meeting. So each morning I like to start my day with a basic... Uh, Candlestick chart and a 9 EMA and a 20 SMA. I start with the monthly and I work my way down. What I'm doing is I'm looking at slope and separation, where the trend is being challenged. You see we have beautiful upward trend for several years. Then end of the year, they uh, violated the trend, took it back in November, or October, November, and then December they came down and challenged it again. January, February fell back below, and then uh, March and April, we've gotten back above, uh, excuse me for one second. 
Um, and so we're above the uh, the uh, 9 and the 20 again on the monthly, so possible continuation on the monthly. On the weekly, we've had this beautiful parabolic move on the weekly, uh, just straight up 45 degree angle, uh, following the uh, 9 EMA nicely, uh, but we do have a naked cross down here at uh, 82, 83 area, um, but right now the trend is up on the weekly. On the daily, uh, same thing. Uh, beautiful slope and separation came down, challenged the trend, took it uh, back, then we get the continuation, and right now we've got good slope, good separation, and we're holding above the 9 nicely, uh, above that 81.50. Remember, 81.50 was our key line in the sand. It's going to remain a key line in the sand for us today. Four-hour going into the intraday, you can see that we've gone into consolidation, and we're going sideways uh, you know, uh, no real slope, no real separation. We are above the 9 and the 20 right now on the 4-hour. Uh, on the 1-hour, you can see we've started to uh, get this trend moving again to the upside. We've got good slope and separation there. Um, so the trend is starting up on the 1-hour. Same thing on the 30-minute. On the 15-minute, more consolidation, uh, no clear direction. And then on the five minute, um, you know, we uh, had the news, took it down to, uh, or took it a little lower than I thought, down to uh, 85.50, and now they popped back up, and we're trading 87.75. Um, so uh, basically consolidation. Taking a look at the big picture, uh, yesterday, uh, you know. We've got this, uh, this microcomposite that uh, I've been tracking, uh, but I've separated it into uh, three smaller profiles. Our VPOC going into yesterday uh, was sitting here at 86, and yesterday with the move back down to the 71 area, the VPOC shifted down to the 7550 area again. And that's where, once we got the breakout, of this balance that we were in, uh, that was the first price that they accepted after the breakout before this uh, uh, this uh, trend day that took us up, and we tried to find value up here and hold it at 93. Then we came down and we were chopping around, and uh, the VPOC shifted to 86. The two-day uh, you know, most traded price is up at 86, but we did come down here to the 70. Uh, five and uh, find value here. So they have to hold this 86 today. Uh, if they don't hold this 86, we're likely to end up back down here and probably even lower this time. I'd say we probably come down to uh, the uh, to the top of that gap at 64. But if they can hold 86 and accept that value, then I'd be looking for a move up into the 93 area. I'm not expecting a lot of expansion today. Uh, you know, they're going to balance things out and wait for the Fed. So I'm really expecting a two-sided trading day and uh, probably uh, even possible range between the 75 and the 93 um, and just uh, chopping around. So... Uh, let me just bring this in. Uh, remember that that 86.50, okay, is the top of the uh, value area for this balance that we came back in, where uh, you know the most uh, the VPOC, microcomposite VPOC, was down here at that 63.50. So just uh, near that. Uh, top of the gap zone. And then the most traded price going all the way back to 2013 is 61.50. So we really want to see us hold above this 86.50 except this, uh, this microcomposite VPOC and uh, stay out of the value and remain in price discovery. If we come back into this prior value, we're likely to start working our way back down towards that uh, uh, 64. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult right now because of the fact that we've got Fed coming up tomorrow 
nobody's anticipating a, uh, a rate change, but um, we want to stay out of value and stay in price discovery uh, if we are, you know, if we want to get another push into the 2100s. So taking a look at uh, the overnight session, we opened up right at the range high uh, of the RTH session from yesterday, chopped around, tried to uh, make a move up, got up into that 87.75, put a double top in. You, know, you can notice that we had this strong move up, FUBAR, you can't see this, but this was actually a uh, at least three times the volume right here. A strong delta, a strong move up, and then we get the Mr. Sneaky. So you had a FUBAR, Mr. Sneaky, Tech Gap, and then it rolled over. Uh, it was beautiful. I traded this short here and uh, and came down, came down into the 81.75. Uh, uh, I got long here again. Took forever to get funded on this and uh, finally got funded at 83 and I held it all the way back up into the 86 level and took it uh, off at uh, 85.75. Um, then we moved up, continuation up as it anticipated up into the 91 and then they, uh, they sold it off again and came back into the 86. So inventory overnight is net positive to neutral. Um, Pretty balanced uh, overnight with some extensions to the uh, upside and to the downside. There is a LVN right here at 84.75. You can see that that coincides with this uh, CLVN here at 84 and a quarter. And then we have our 81.50, which is going to be our line in the sand still. Um, so let's take our uh, our. Uh, levels and start moving them over. Our overnight high, 91.50. Our overnight low, 81.50. Basically, I'm sorry, 91 and a quarter. Eighty-one fifty. And then our VPOC is not likely to shift 86 and a quarter. And we have the LVN at, uh, at 84.75, but we've got the range high at 83.50. So I'm going to have a trade level here. This uh, area right here, this little LVN, 81.50 in the overnight low. Uh, is going to be my key line in the sand. And then there's really not much other information that we can get out of the Globex session. So let's just move this over. And again, this is a triple distribution zone with the 8150, again, I'm not pulling these numbers from nowhere. The 8150 is the LVN in, in, in between the middle distribution and the lower distribution. And then above us, we've got the uh, 8975 and our range high right here at 89. So I'm going to be using the 89 uh, to 80 uh, to 90 level uh, as a trade level. And then Basically, we're going to be opening, if we open right here, we're going to open inside, I mean, outside of range and outside of value. So we're going to have an open auction out of range or a o open rejection reverse or open drive. Those are our three open types that we're likely to see. Um, open rejection reverse will take us down and either reject off of, uh, off of the 83 or the uh, or the 8150 or the 7850, and then opposing force step in and move us right back up through uh, outside of uh, range and up towards the overnight high and the 93. The 93 is my uh, main target above right now.
And then above that, you've got the 9850. All these numbers don't change. 2175. Our 20-day ATR is running at 2195. So our upside ATR target is 2103 and a quarter. Our weekly uh, upside uh, target is still all the way up here at 2139.50 off of the week low at 71 that we put in yesterday. And then our downside ATR target is down here at 69 and a quarter, just above our downside target of that 69.75. And then below that, we do have that top of the uh, gap zone at 64. And then there's a ton of stuff in between the 64 and the 55 area. We've got the uh, micropause VPOC at 63.50. We've got the naked VPOC at 63 and a quarter. We got the composite VPOC at 61.50. Naked close at 60 and a quarter. The bottom of the gap zone at 58.50 and then naked close and naked VPOC all down here. So if we don't hold the 69, this is a major target uh, below us. Um, so, and then inside of uh, value and range, we've got the uh, value area high at 80, but I'm really going to use uh, the 8150, I think it's more uh, more important. If we get below the 8150, I'd be looking for a move down to take out the naked VPOC at 7850. Uh, but the target really is down here at the uh, at the 7575, the microcomposite VPOC. All right, and then below at 73.50, we've got the value area low. <clears throat> and then that 70 area, but if we get outside of value, I don't think 71 is going to hold. It's, you know, it's all, all going to be about the 69.75 and 69 and a quarter. So those are our levels. So what am I looking at this morning? I'm looking at an open auction out of range or open rejection reverse. And I'm expecting the open chop around, come down, take out the, uh, the overnight VPOC and the naked close and the naked VPOC here. Possibly find responsive buyers, but I think they'll push through down to close the gap at uh, 83 and a quarter. And then between 83 and a quarter and the 8150, I'm expecting responsive buying to step in and then rotate us back up, you know, through uh, the 85, 86 area, this middle distribution, struggle here, come back down, and then push up into the 92, 93 level. So that's my main hypothesis. I'm not looking for a lot of expansion. I'm basically looking from somewhere between 75 and 93 to, to be the range and further define between these three levels, this 93, the 86, uh, and the 75 area and determine fair value coming into the uh, Fed announcement before that happens. So I'm expecting the move to happen early in the trading session and then you know, basically chop around maybe a late day probe. My secondary hypothesis is a open drive, get initiative buyers stepping in, uh, somewhere opening somewhere in around the 85 to 86, taking out these naked VPOCs, open drive up into the 91 and a quarter to 93, find uh, responsive sellers, and then rotate back down through down to the 75 to 78 area and then chop around into the close uh, in that area. And then the third hypothesis is basically open auction out of range, come down, take out the 83, and come up and just sort of chop around in this uh, this 86 level and uh, and, you know, 
uh, move the microcomposite VPOC up into the middle distribution uh, at the uh, 8675 level. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of my hypo three main hypotheses. Right now, we are below the Keltner center line at 87.75, a move down to the lower Keltner will take us down into that 82 and take out the overnight low at 81.50. Likely, by the time we get there, uh, a move above the Keltner center line, a move up to the upper Keltner will take us up into 93, and you can see how the Keltner is defining the range as well as the microcomposite uh, as we look at it. Uh, taking a look at gold, gold, as I said, is not going anywhere quick right now. We uh, got the shift of the microcomposite VPOC down to the composite VPOC. This 20, or this 1235.30 is the most traded price in gold going all the way back to October 2008. It was down here at 1204. It shifted up, uh, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago or a week or two ago. And since then, we've just been chopping around it. I'm not expecting uh, gold to go anywhere quick right now. Uh, I'm waiting for a breakout above the 5540 or below the uh, 1226 area uh, before I look at gold because it's just going to chop in this area and it's too volatile and, uh, and stuck in the middle right now. So that's going to complete uh, our pre-market session. Just take a quick look at the book map. You can see that uh, right now uh, liquidity is from 88.50 up to 90 or from 86 down through to 83. You've got more liquidity down here. And that's one of the reasons why I'm expecting to come down here first and find responsive buyers uh, down here, or initiative buyers, I should say, down here. Anyway, that's going to complete our pre-market session. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.